The merge recordings function in GarageBand iOS is super cool. It allows you to record more complex MIDI parts by recording them in multiple takes. So how does it work and how can you use it in your projects? Well, in this video, we're gonna take a look. Let's go. Hi, my name is Pete and this is Studio Live Today where I help you create, record and release your best music. And if you're using GarageBand on your iPad or your iPhone, then creating MIDI drums or keyboard parts or any other virtual instrument can be a little bit tricky. But with the merge recordings function, you can cheat a little bit and record them one step at a time. So how does it work and how can you use it? Let's jump into GarageBand now and find out. Now you can use the merge recordings function in any of your MIDI instruments, your keyboards, your strings, or any other virtual instrument. But the place that I like to use it the best and the easiest place to explain it is in the drums. So let's tap on drums and open up our drum kit. And what we're gonna do here is we are going to record a drum part. Now I'll show you where Merge Recordings is first. If we tap on the mixer icon here up in the top left, or if you're on a smaller device, it'll be in the top right under your settings and go to your mixer icon. Now if we go to track settings and under recording here, you can see here that we have Merge Recordings on at the moment. Let's tap to turn that off because I'm first gonna show you what would happen if we recorded without this. So what I'm gonna do is let's record a little bit of a drum, a bass drum pattern here, first of all, and then we'll start adding to it. So we'll hit record. So we've just got two bars there of a bass drum pattern. So at the moment, it sounds like that and that's okay. But what if we now wanted to add a snare? Well, let's hit record and see if we can add our snare to this now. So we've added our snare, but what has happened? Well, it's overwritten our kick drum. So now we've got our snare there, but it is actually completely overwritten our, our original kick drum pattern. So let's hit undo and we'll hit undo again. And there you go, we're back to our kick drum there. We'll go undo and we'll go back to our standard view. So how do we actually make sure that we can layer up our different parts and play them one at a time? Well, we can use merge recording. So let's tap on track settings again. We'll go into recording. Let's turn merge recordings on and then come back Back to our track here, go back into our drums, and now when we want to come and play it, let's do the exact same thing. So we'll first record our kick drum by hitting record and playing. There's our kick drum recorded in there. Now let's hit record again and let's record our snare. Now, apart from playing that snare way too quietly, um, it has worked a treat. You can see here that when we look back on our track, we've now got a really good kick drum with a really weak snare. We can now repeat the process. So let's tap on our drum again and let's add in a hi-hat here by hitting record again. And you can see how quickly that you can really build up a pretty complicated kind of drum pattern. Obviously we've only used a kick and a snare and a hi-hat. So at the moment we have this. And we've got it pretty poorly recorded because I didn't play it very well, but you can see the power of this and we can use it with our other instruments as well. So let's give you a quick demo with our keyboard instrument here to show you what we can actually do. So we'll go away from our synth sounds there. We'll just come back to our regular classical grand keyboard here. And what I'm gonna do is let's just record a little bit of a chord sequence here to go with our drums. And then I'll show you what we can add over the top. So let's hit record. Again, our two bar song is sounding good. Let's tap the up button here so we can go up to our next octave. All right, we're gonna record something like that. Let's hit record actually first. Let's go in here, make sure our merge recordings is on. So we'll go in here to our recording and it's not. So this is a little trap. You need to make sure that you turn it on here on the instrument that you'll be using because it may not be on by default. Let's now hit record and record our second part of this piano. And we'll hit stop. Let's go back to our track view and take a look at what we've got. Here is everything together. Let's hit play and play it all back together. 
Now, what you could do, of course, you could record these all on separate tracks. So we could come in here and we could add another keyboard track and have a second piano playing the high part and the original piano playing the low part. But you could very quickly run out of tracks because each individual virtual instrument track takes up two tracks because they're all stereo tracks. And you've got 32 tracks, but you've only got 16 stereo tracks. So using the merge recording functions to create those more complex parts on a single track can really help you out and make sure that you can bring your tracks together and create some more complicated MIDI parts using just that merge recording function. So there you go, the merge recordings function. Definitely a very cool way to record your tracks here in GarageBand. Now, if you'd like to check out the full series of GarageBand Quick Jam videos, which are my quick tutorials all about GarageBand, you can check out the description below or click one of the links at the end. If you've got any comments, questions, or suggestions, you can also leave those down in the comments, and I'll see you on the next video. Hey, thanks for sticking around. If you would like to check out some more videos here on the channel, there are two linked right down below. You can also subscribe to the channel by clicking or tapping on the Studio Live Today icon up there in the top right corner, or you can head on over to studiolivetoday.com for even more audio goodness.